Once upon a time, enterprise employees worked in company offices. They sat at desks and did their work on company-owned desktop computers. Now an employee's work moves with them from place to place on laptops, tablets, and phones. And very often, the work resides on devices the employees own. All of this has shifted the work of the enterprise IT staff dramatically. Sure, they may spend some time setting up a company-owned PC for an on-site worker, but mostly they're helping employees access corporate systems and data on mobile devices. And often those workers are remote. This cavalcade of mobile devices and remote employees is one reason unified endpoint management platforms were created. In the next few minutes, we'll cover the basics of unified endpoint management, or UEM. We'll look at how it works and what to think about when choosing and deploying a UEM product. For a deeper dive, you can explore our complete collection on all things UEM by clicking the link above or the link in the description below. UEM as a concept is simple. It's a software tool to secure and control devices from a single console. You might hear the term single pane of glass interface used to describe that console. The capabilities of specific UEM products may vary. Most share certain features. They have application management capabilities. They have a portal that lets users enroll their own devices. They can push updates to devices. They can apply security policies to manage devices. And they have a remote wipe feature that removes apps and data when a device is lost or stolen. UEM platforms are made up of seven main components. Device management. This refers to the platform's ability to work over the internet. This way, the UEM can remotely send configurations, commands, and queries to a device. This capability lets the UEM do things like manage OS and application updates or track a device's location. OS and device support. Most UEM offerings support multiple types of clients like Apple and Android, but they also can manage other types of devices like Chromebooks and Chrome OS devices. Many ruggedized devices such as wearable devices like smart glasses and goggles for virtual reality or augmented reality run Android OS, or they inherit management capabilities from paired smartphones. Some UEM products can manage those kinds of devices so it's important to know what type of devices your IT staff needs to manage when choosing a UEM platform. Deployment and enrollment. Traditional client deployment is a labor-intensive process of device imaging. UEM's way of working is much more convenient. Even though an IT team can still manually enroll Apple iOS, Android, Mac OS, or Windows 11 devices through the user interface, these OSs also offer automatic enrollment and provisioning. That's what's happening when you power on a modern device for the first time, and it automatically checks in with a cloud service. If it's a corporate device, it can redirect the appropriate UEM platform to enroll and configure automatically instead. BYOD and privacy. The moment employees began using their own iOS and Android devices in the workplace, aka bring your own device, or BYOD, corporate data and apps started cohabitating with personal data and apps. And that created some unprecedented security and privacy challenges. Today's UEM platforms have features created specifically to deal with those challenges. Mobile app management. MAM is essential for devices that aren't enrolled in the enterprise's mobile device management system. I'm talking about devices owned by contract employees here. Using MAM, UEM platforms can treat an app as the endpoint and build management features into the application. Features like encryption, passcode challenges, and settings configurations. Identity and Access Management, or IAM, UEM developed as a response to the rise of mobile devices, and so did IAM. The two go hand in hand and work well together. For instance, UEM can provide additional context for access and authentication decisions. An IAM access policy can look at the signals from the UEM, things like device location or patching status, before deciding whether to grant or block access. 
And last but far from least, security. Security for mobile operating systems works very differently from traditional desktop operating systems. For one thing, mobile devices are always connected to the internet and they're much more easily lost. Because of this, mobile OSs are sandboxed. That means apps on a device interact with each other and the OS in a very limited and highly supervised way. User-controlled permissions protect sensitive data. Mobile apps must be verified and generally come from curated app stores with security reviews and mechanisms for revoking apps. It's great that IT can remotely lock or erase devices using over-the-air technology, but just like any operating system, there are vulnerabilities. Mobile threat defense products are available now to augment UEM. These tools generally cover four areas. Device integrity, which includes jailbreak and root detection. Network security to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. Mobile app reputation service and phishing prevention. So that's what UEM is and how it works. But how do you find the right one for your organization? It's a big question, tread carefully. Because UEM is a sticky product. Once devices are enrolled, it's hard to unenroll them without in-person support. There are a few questions you should ask of any vendor whose UEM platform you're considering. Does the product support all the operating systems and deployment models that your organization uses, such as BYOD, ruggedized, or corporate? Will the product support future deployment scenarios like IoT devices or new OSs from Mac or Windows? Does the vendor provide timely support for new iOS and Android versions? Besides endpoint management, what other services does the product have? For instance, are there app catalogs, email clients, or productivity apps? What security and identity features are bundled in? Does the UEM tool integrate with your IAM and security products? Does the product integrate well with all your existing on-premises architecture? Also, be sure to check out the vendor's approach to BYOD, privacy, and user experience. And finally, as with any software buying decision, be sure the vendor can meet the desired service level agreement and regulatory certification requirements for your company. Once you've chosen a UEM platform, the next step is deployment. That requires careful planning because end users and personal privacy are involved. Be sure to remember that policies your organization makes about UEM aren't for the IT department alone to fashion. Human resources and the legal department must be involved. Now, when it comes to deploying your new UEM, device enrollment will likely be your greatest challenge. Automatic device enrollment might save labor, but it demands coordination between the UEM platform and the device reseller. Also, Getting end users to enroll devices requires training, and even with training, achieving compliance can be a challenge. That's a lot to digest, I know. But I want to leave you with one final cautionary note. When it comes to UEM, you must always keep the future in mind. That's because a UEM deployment is not a single project. It is constantly changing, because operating systems are constantly changing. And those OS updates bring with them new MDM APIs and features, and all of this must be managed by enterprise IT. Yes, with UEM, that old truism holds. Change is the one constant you can count on. But I'm hoping this brief guide to UEM leaves you better equipped to cope with all that's involved. The payoff in terms of productivity and ease of use is well worth it.